today we are talking about five different money hacks that you have not heard of. There are a lot of popular money hacks out there on how to save more money or spend less money, but I'm going to talk about some that you probably have not heard of. I am Tiffany Thomas with WealthyTiffany.com and I achieved financial freedom at age 38. And if you are looking to achieve financial freedom at a young age as well, hit that like button and hit the subscribe button and we are going to dive right in. All right, the first money hack that I want to talk about is when you are doing a large project, you want to get multiple bids. I've done this numerous times with different projects at all of my different rentals or even my own property. But what I have found is that when I get multiple bids, there is one that is usually lower than the rest. And sometimes it is a lot lower than the rest. For example, when I had to get four huge cottonwood trees removed from one of my properties in the backyard because three of them were pretty much dead and one of them was half dead. So I didn't want them falling on my house or the neighbor's house. So I got a number of different bids and a lot of them actually came in pretty close, but there was one bid that came in thousands of dollars less than the other bids. So I went with that one and he also got good reviews. I found him on KSL. It's a popular website in Utah that people use to list their services or even items that they are selling. But if I hadn't put in the extra time or effort to get multiple bids, then I wouldn't have been able to save thousands of dollars. And even if all of your bids did come in around the same price, at least you would know that that's the price, that's the going rate, and you could feel comfortable in choosing one of those bids. Instead of just wondering, oh, um, since I only got one bid, am I getting a good deal or am I not getting a good deal? You'll actually know when you have other bids to compare it to. The second money hack I want to share with you is getting rid of the word can't. A lot of people say, I can't afford that. And really, money is a lot about your mindset, the way you feel toward money or the emotions that you have about money is really important. It is a huge part of your financial situation. And if you're continuously telling yourself you can't afford things or you can't go out to dinner tonight, whatever it is, then you continuously tell yourself, oh, I am lacking. I need to make more money or I need to be better at investing or whatever it might be. But there's kind of that scarcity mindset and we want to get rid of that. So by not using the word can't and changing that to something else like, oh, you know what? I actually would rather spend my money on something else. So I'm not going to buy this right now. Or even just, oh, I don't want to spend my money on that. Or, oh, I have a goal I'm working toward and I really want to focus on that money goal. So I'm not going to spend my money on these certain things right now. Or using the word choose. I choose not to buy this right now. Maybe I'll buy it later. You can tell a difference when you aren't using that word can't because it does sound like a scarcity mindset. And when we are changing that around saying, oh, I don't want to buy that right now, then in our mind, we're not so worried about money. We're just saying, oh, you know what? That's not something I'm choosing to buy right now, but I could buy it later if I want to. Because honestly, we can do whatever we want to. It's the consequences that may not be so good if we choose to buy a new couch and we don't have any money to do that. Then we'd be going into debt or maxing out our credit cards and then we have the consequence of paying off all of that debt. It just doesn't sound as the negative if we aren't using the word can't, if we're just saying, oh, you know what? That's not in my budget right now, so I'm not going to spend money on that. When we use the word can't, it tends to stay on our minds more. If we're saying, oh, I can't afford that right now, then we start to think about it later and think, oh, well, maybe I could, maybe I could go back to the store and buy it. But if we were just telling ourselves, you know what? I don't want that right now. Then it's not something that's going to stay on our minds. And we can move on and think about more important things. You're the one that's in control of your money. So you can choose what you buy and what you don't buy. It's a lot more empowering when you are making that choice instead of just saying, oh, I can't do that. So think about that the next time you use the word can't. And I would recommend in any type of situation, avoiding the word can't. All right, money hack number three is to think outside the box and get ideas from different places. 
And by this, I mean you can use Google or YouTube and figure out a better way or a new way to be better at your finances or be better at investing or spending less or making more, whatever it is that would improve your financial situation. See if someone else is doing it better. There are a lot of ideas out there. And I know when I've done this for myself, I think, oh, wow, that is such a great idea. For example, I want to manage my rental properties better. So I went on YouTube and looked at a few different real estate channels, and one of them recommended staggering your leases. So for my rentals, I have a 12-month lease, and sometimes I have people move in at the same time. But if I was to do two 12-month leases at the same time, then they would renew at the same time, and I may have to be finding two new tenants at the same time. But if I was to stagger that and do one at 12 months and then the other one at nine months, then I'm not finding two new tenants at the same time. So there are always ways to improve your financial situation. You just have to find them. And going back to my earlier example of finding a lower bid for the removal of my trees, the way I did that was actually going on to Google and looking for coupons for tree removal. And that person on KSL happened to pop up on Google because he had gotten so many great reviews and I thought, oh, duh, why am I not looking on KSL? And once I did that, that is when I got the lower bid. So it's not all about you trying to figure things out on your own. You can definitely talk to other people and look for those that have done what you want to do and use the tips that they are sharing. And even if you think you're doing pretty good, there's probably some improvements you could make. I know that is true for me. There's a lot of improvements I can make. So just do a quick Google search or a search on YouTube and see how people are doing it. And maybe you are doing it the best way already, or maybe there is a little bit better way that you can improve upon. Comment below money if you are liking these money hacks. Money hack number four is to focus on one financial goal at a time. I know this has helped me achieve my financial goals. For example, when I wanted to become financially free, that was my main goal, I really focused in on that one goal and all of my spending decisions were based on that goal. So I really cut back on things that really weren't necessary or really weren't a priority for me. For example, I ate a lot of my food storage. I have a bunch of food in my basement in a storage room. And if you haven't really heard of food storage per se, it's just buying extra cans or pails of food that are going to last for the long term. And I actually used to work for a food storage company, so I would get a discount on those food items. So I had a bunch in my food storage. And I thought, you know what? I don't want this to go bad, so I'm going to rotate through some of my food storage. So I used bottled peaches that my mom had actually given me, she has a peach tree, and bottled tomatoes, or even grape juice, or rice, or oats, just a bunch of different items that I had in my food storage. I wasn't really paying to go out to eat a ton, but just by using my food storage, that helped me save even more money. When you have that one focus, then everything else kind of just falls into place because you're so focused on that goal, it's at the top of your mind. So you're thinking, oh, well, do I really want to go out to eat now, or do I want to put that money toward whatever goal I'm working towards? And it keeps things very simple. You're not working on a ton of different things at once thinking, oh, well, maybe I should do this or maybe I should do this. Oh, I don't know. And you just end up spending the money. But when you're focused on just that one goal that you really want to achieve, then you kind of just automatically start spending less and putting more money toward that goal that you're excited about. And it's not that you completely stop spending money on all of the fun things going on, but you're just more prioritized. You know what you're working toward, you know what is really important to you, and you can spend your money on that. And the last money hack, money hack number five that I want to share with you is one that I really love. It makes budgeting very, very simple. This is using an app that links all of your financial accounts to it. I personally like to use personal capital. And if you have watched my other videos then you have heard this money hack before, but I really like it because you can hook all of your credit cards, your mortgage, your 401k even, your savings, your checking, everything that is financial, and you can hook all of those accounts to personal capital. 
and see it in one place. And you can check this every day. It takes maybe 30 seconds to update your accounts. You can see where your investments are. You can see if your bills got paid or if your paycheck came through or if you got charged a late fee or if there is a subscription that you forgot about on one of your credit cards. I know a lot of people really struggle with budgeting. They don't really like to write down each item that they are spending their money on and then look at it every month or every two weeks, whatever it might be. So then they just don't even want to look at their whole financial picture. And that is a huge problem. We need to know where our money is going, how much money is coming in so that we are not spending more than we are making and that we are investing the extra money that we do have. But if you don't know where you are with your finances, then you can't do that. You can't set these goals or make progress with your financial situation. So this is just a really easy way to do that. And there are other apps out there like Personal Capital, so you can just pick one that you like, but if you do wanna try Personal Capital, you can get a free $20 Amazon gift card when you hook one of your retirement accounts to Personal Capital with my referral link below in the description. So start tracking your money so that you can set those financial goals and achieve them. Comment below with your favorite money hack, and if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and share it with someone else who would like to be better with their money, and hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my YouTube channel, and hit the little bell to get notified on when I post new videos. And if you want to see more content from me, check out the videos on the side of the screen. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.